Okay, so let's confirm with the word. John chapter 7, verse 14 now, about the midst in the middle of the feast, Yeshua went up into the temple, Jesus, and taught. So, um, as we just saw, that the middle represents the twilight zone. And I have to point out something else in verse 22. <laughs> Um, to confirm the calendar that I've been showing you all. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is it, I'm sorry, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. So it had to be on the Sabbath when you circumcised a male baby. As we know, Yeshua was circumcised on the eighth day of tabernacles, which is Yeshua, um, Shemini Hatzeret, Tishri 22, and Tishri 22, the 22nd day, is always a Sabbath. So it was the 8th day of Tabernacles, and it was a Sabbath. Okay, so he was circumcised on a Sabbath day, so watch this. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, if you're new to this channel, um, I have a, a calendar that I call Yah's Calendar and it depicts the correct Sabbath days. The Saturday Sabbath is not correct. Um, there are specific time frames and, and sets of seven that the Father has tried to show us when his Sabbath days fall. And those Sabbath days fall one week after the new moon, which was which is the 8th because the new moon is the first day. So then seven days later would be the first Sabbath, which is the 8th. Then seven days later is the second Sabbath. These are weekly Sabbaths of the month. The second Sabbath is day 15. Seven days later, the third Sabbath is day 22. And seven days later, the last Sabbath of the month is day 29. So, um... If this is the day, and this is why if it's in the twilight zone, it has to be right in the twinkling of an eye, in the split second, in between these two days, in the time of obscurity, where it's technically it's still the 22nd, and it's getting ready to be the 23rd, because the 22nd, as I just said, is a Sabbath, and as you just saw from John chapter 7, that a man is circumcised on a Sabbath. This is a Sabbath, and this is a Sabbath. So there are two Sabbaths here, two witnesses. And then it's kind of interesting that it's on the eighth day of November, which the eighth day is also a Sabbath. The only one that's missing here of the weekly Sabbath of the month is day 15, which is here. But so there's one Sabbath day here, another Sabbath day here where the bride could be quote-unquote circumcised and to be circumcised is to be um, confirming your covenant with the Lord and we are to be sanctified in that process um, there's sanctification that comes with circumcision and that goes back to um, Exodus 13 where he talks about sanctifying the firstborn well Yeshua was the firstborn and the only begotten son and us being his body we are representative also of the firstborn so let's just read that real quick so in Exodus 13 this is when this is the day that they came out of Egypt it was the first day of unleavened bread or Nisan 15 and look what it says here, dedication of the firstborn. That's us. So we are to be dedicated. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify, consecrate, set apart. The bride is set apart from the world. Unto me all the firstborn. And then Moses goes on to say, Remember this day in which you came out of Egypt. So he's saying that the day you came out of Egypt, which is in Nisan 15, that is the day that you were sanctified unto the Lord, you were consecrated, you were set apart as the firstborn. 
So in John chapter 10, verse 22, if you can see, uh, it talks about um, Yeshua going into the temple. There's a 20, a 22. So if you notice all these verse numbers, they are all Sabbath days. Um, except for John 714, but let me just... Let me interject real quick about 714. The Lord had showed me those numbers years ago. I don't remember how many, but it's probably been 10 or more. I always had an infinity for the numbers 1 and 4 and 7, and I have used them in different emails, email addresses, um, in different, you know, like 147, um, 417, and right now, my email address has the numbers 714 and we just read John chapter 7 verse 14 and about him going up in the midst of the Feast of Tabernacles and also with my current email address is the phrase fly free and the reason I chose that name was because um, back in 2008, I did an internship with a, an animal training company that used to, they don't anymore, but they used to go to Dallas, Texas and do a bird show every year. And I went to Dallas for six weeks and was part of this bird show. And they have, or had in the bird show, they had macaws, parrots, that were part of the show and they would fly around and you know everybody would went off because they're so pretty when they're flying with all their different coloring and one of the things they gave us was one of those rubber bracelets you know those that have messages on them and um, because they had extras and so they were giving them to us and on the bracelet it said fly free and it was for the parrot trust fund and of course I took one and I wore it for a long time until it finally wore out but I liked the, the name when I chose it for an email because um, I also used to work with Birds of Prey and <laughs> of course um, since I worked with Birds of Prey I worked with Eagles and um, my favorite verse to this day even before I began working with those birds is Isaiah forty thirty one we shall mount up with wings like eagles and um, my ex from many years ago gave me a little card, like a little business card that had that verse on it with a picture of an eagle flying. And I still have it to this day. It's on my refrigerator. So <laughs> do you see how he works through our lives, all throughout our lives? He's, he's, he's showing us things to point us to him. And I believe to this time frame we're in right now. So, okay, moving on with the study. Um... Okay, so John chapter 10, verse 22, is when he goes, well, let's just read it. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication. And look here, what does dedication mean? Um, Engahi Naha, dedication, renewal of religious services. But there's also, um, if we go back to um, 1 Kings chapter 8, I'm sorry, let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 7, which is the same as I've been talking about, the, is the parallel of the events in First Kings chapter 8. So, the Feast of Dedication, and let's see what the word dedication means. Hanukkah. So see, as I was talking about in the, in the video that I posted earlier today, that we're thinking of Hanukkah as a, you know, a Jewish holiday that happens in winter, well, um, he's letting us know that, no, don't look at it like that. It's Hanukkah. This is where they get the name Hanukkah, and it means dedication, consecration. And what did we just read in Exodus 13? The Lord said to consecrate all the firstborn unto me. Okay, so, um, as we saw, uh, Yeshua went up to, um, the temple to observe the Feast of Dedication, or Hanukkah, and it says he went up to the temple to teach, and it was winter. So let's see something about winter in Israel. 
So as you see here, I did a search. It is actually winter in Israel right now, late October to mid-March. So our feast of Hanukkah doesn't have to be December 21st because that's, you know, what um, we know as the turning point as the winter solstice. Um, but in Israel, winter begins in late October. And we, so basically it just began. So for Yeshua to come into the temple during the Feast of Dedication, during winter, totally fits with this time frame right now. And of course, I just had to show the verses because <clears throat> it's John chapter 10, verses 22 and 23. That's not coincidence. So it was Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter, and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So where's Solomon's porch? Let's go see. So as you see here, this is Solomon's porch. It's on the east end of what used to be um, Herod's temple, which was the second temple. And this is the area, the, the colonnade, where... Yeshua would meet with his disciples and where people would gather before entering into this area because once they entered into this area, the men and the women had to go into separate areas um, to pray and to um, worship. There is, there's a, a men's area and a women's area. So this is where they gathered before going into um, the separate areas and this is where Yeshua would teach. And this is what it says about Solomon's porch. Uh, one winter at the festival of dedication or Hanukkah, Jesus was in Jerusalem and John describes him as in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. That's what we just read in John 10, 23. The KJV says Solomon's porch. In Acts 5, 12, Solomon's porch was the gathering place for, in, for believers in Jerusalem before the diaspora. Diaspora. The Gathering Place. The Feast of Tabernacles is also called the Feast of Ingathering, which is why on Shemini Atzeret, the eighth day, you have a solemn assembly where everyone gathers together. Earlier in Acts 3.11, Peter and John had healed a lame man at Solomon's porch and preached to a large crowd that had gathered there. So that obviously this is a gathering place where um, not only Yeshua, but Peter and John went to to teach and to preach and to heal people. And I just wanted to share this part to November 7th, which is tomorrow as I'm recording this video on the evening of the 6th, is the 311th day of the year. 311, Revelation 311, Behold, I come quickly. This day marks the approximate midpoint of autumn in the northern hemisphere and of spring in the southern hemisphere. You see, when the midpoint, that's the middle, remember. When the, the verse where he says, pray that your flight not be in winter or on the Sabbath, uh, I believe that could be referring to another group that will be going later, like um, during Jacob's trouble. However, the time that he comes, um, the reason he says that, is because it has to be in either a springtime or an autumn time to not be winter anywhere on the earth. Because if it's summer here, it's winter in the southern hemisphere. I say here because I'm in the northern hemisphere. If it's um, fall here, then it's going to be spring in the southern hemisphere. So, in other words, what I'm trying to say is, in other for it not to be winter time in any part of the world, he has to come between, during an autumn, which would be a spring in the southern hemisphere. He has to come during this time because any other time it would be winter somewhere, whether it's here or in the southern hemisphere, it would be winter because the summer and the winter are the, the opposite um, seasons for the northern and southern hemisphere. So. Do you see, guys, how everything is pointing to what I'm sharing here right now? 